blockchain here coming at you with another technical analysis update for those of you just tuning in i'm primarily an elliott wave trader using other areas of confluence and other technical analysis to really complement my price analysis so without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the charts Alright guys, so before we dive into the charts real quick, just wanted to uh, give a couple updates on my website here. Um, number one is if you actually go and create a profile, um, you will now have the link directly for my number one trading strategy video right then and there. Uh, very, I guess a little bit quicker uh, than what we were doing before. Uh, I know some of there was a little bit of a lag time on some of the emails from some of the feedback, so I was able to get this up and going. So if you actually create a profile, you can actually just go ahead and log in, get my number one trading strategy for free right then and there. Um, and again, this is kind of just first step of what is to come further on down the road. And then I also want to highlight the Discord as well. So I'm um, actually Elite Trader in the New Wave Traders Discord. Um, this is a paid Discord, but there is a ton of value and prices are going to be going up. And so I just want to highlight the options so that we currently have. So right now it's $25 a month to give it a shot, as well as we, another have, or we have another option for $147 a year, which is actually half price uh, versus monthly for the entire year. Uh, it would be $294 if you paid monthly for an entire year. So a couple great options for us to go on and join. I um, hope to see you guys in there. I'll actually we'll highlight a couple things in the Discord real quick as well uh, before we dive into the charts. And also, um, a, I guess the the main guy that we have in our um, uh, in our Discord group here is the Crypto Hippo, um, a.k.a. Shiler or actually he is uh, having a special launch prize for his Elliott Wave Masterclass, uh, which is primarily what the kind of trader I am, permanent Elliott Wave trader. It's actually $97 for a special launch price for his Elliott Wave Masterclass. So for me personally, Elliott Wave was kind of the, the missing key, the missing component that I've had for my trading strategy. And it is actually, um, it's, it's helped me immensely along my trading room road and trading path that I've had. So uh, definitely check those out real quick and actually want to go ahead and dive into a couple things in the Discord. So this is actually something that I am uh, very active in. Uh, we have our elite traders, which are, you know, our full-time professional traders. We have the Crypto Hippo, um, Dragonfly, myself, Odie, Upland, and then overall questions and chat. Um, a lot of great communication. Um, even when I'm not able to do videos or post stuff on the Twitter, whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm in here with the group of over a thousand members. Um, and you can kind of see where we were talking about some scalp strategies, you know, uh, Danny, um, Thanks for the call out, um, you know, based upon some of the charts and the feedback I was posting on ETH, was able to capitalize on some profits, um, you know, same with Blue, uh, he was actually to take some profits on ETH as well. So it's kind of nice to see some good collaboration and, um, you know, seeing other members take profits based upon some of the stuff that we are talking about here in the group. So. Uh, but the Crypto Hippo is in here, he does his videos, um, he has a lot of great technical analysis, same with uh, Dragonfly. Um, you know, obviously I have myself where I post my charts, Odie, um, different trading strategies as well. So you got a, a wide range of indicators, strategies that are used. We actually have our signals uh, group as well, um, general chat as well as just, you know, other you know, sections for other members of the group to post their thoughts as well as ask questions um, and a lot of, you know, introductory education um, to get a little bit more of from the advanced piece. So a ton of information. Uh, prices will be going up on our Discord just because there's so much value in here. So definitely take advantage of it while it's still $25 a month. So I do hope to see you guys in there. Um, before we dive into the charts, one more quick announcement. Um, the winner for oops sorry guys the winner for um the 
risk management strategy for last week uh, was actually Lauren Schutzel. Uh, so I sent you a message. Go ahead and send me on over my email. So congratulations. I'll go ahead and send you over my risk management strategy um, so that we have that as well. So congratulations. I appreciate the comments and the support to my channel and the content. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm going to start with ETH. Look at a couple things here on the weekly. Um, and it's pretty interesting from a weekly standpoint where we've had so many green candles in a row. Um, and actually, ETH has had less than Bitcoin has. Um, I do do Bitcoin and ETH together just because they are very correlated. There's about a 90% correlation between the two. And sometimes one offers a little bit more clarity than the other one in regards to where the direction of the uh, price is going to go. And that's really why I like to focus on the two together. So just kind of looking at a couple of different things. So one, um, you know, it's looking a little tired right now for ETH. Um, you know, obviously there's still four days left in the week. A lot can happen. But where we are currently, um, you know, we had a, a great run, but it is looking a little tired. Looking at some of the indicators as well. Um, you know, we have the Stokes that are getting a little bit closer together. Um, same here with our fast EMA and our slow EMAs on the um, Constance Brown Index, as well as the RSI, um, looking at potentially crossing those over um, and kind of just starting to flatten out up here on the top. And that's, you know, is showing a little bit of sign of weakness up here at the $200 range. Now, overall, looking at the chart, you can see just going back in time how much that this area has played a role. Um, you know, we found support. Uh, rejection here from a resistance standpoint it was support here um, you know ultimately we broke it fell through even right here on you know a weekly we came up tagged it, um, it got rejected and then ultimately came up and, and took back off went through it when we were going through that bull run um, and even back here um, you know we were consolidating around this range trying to make a decision so a pretty critical point right now for ETH and you know this um, these next four days, depending how this candle closes, is going to be pretty interesting to see how it overall plays out. Um, uh, looking at the, I'm gonna drop it to the daily here, get a little bit of clarity. All right, so uh, the daily, um, you know, we're right in between the two volume bands, and. Somewhat of a similar story, you know, we got this rejection here um, and somewhat consolidating. However, um, you could also see how much the Constance Brown Index has actually gone down and reset. Um, I do like to use this one just because it shows a little bit more um, divergence, shows the divergence better than the RSI in my opinion. And that's, uh, you know, part of one of the things I look at from a strategy perspective. But you can see how little price is actually reset versus some of these other indicators. You know, we did have the um, the Stokes cross on the daily, and RSI is back in between. It's getting squeezed in between the EMA. So kind of interesting to see. You know, under a little bit of pressure here, and I think we'll ultimately end up making a decision um, sometime here in the near future. Um, but you know, we do have the trend line that's right above us at about 260, and when we look at the daily, um, we can flip over to this guy here. Uh, we're I've been taking a look at a couple of different things, but um, it from where we have from an LA wave perspective is kind of uh, I guess where this wave ended is what is ultimately going to uh, determine what the end price is going to be uh, from this run. Um, again, my opinion is still does look pretty corrective to me. It doesn't. Um, come off necessarily impulsive, but there's a couple of different ways in which we can count it. And it kind of just depends where this move ends, um, whether it ended here or if it ended here. And that's ultimately what we're going to look at because that is going to play a big role for what this overall move is. Um, if this down wave, this entire drop ended here for this five wave structure, um, this would ultimately kick off in a three-wave move if it ended here, like that. Or if it did not and ended here on a smaller time frame, this is an impulsive wave uh, for a five-wave move up. And that's ultimately what's going to 
play a role in regards to what this move is and how high it can really go. <clears throat> but there's a couple things in here that I am somewhat concerned with when it comes to making this an overall five-wave impulsive move. And it has a lot of three-wave moves in it, so I was looking at this as pretty corrective. Um, but also one thing to that I want to look at as well is if this did start here for a five-wave move, then this being a five-wave move would be a one. And then we have our one, two, three for a wave two. And then we would need another five-wave up for a wave three, which ultimately should be there with a wave four and then up again for a wave five. Um, but this whole mo section right here is what I have a problem with from a wave three perspective. Just because overall this does look more of a three wave. Um, it doesn't necessarily have a clean five wave structure in it. Normally what we'll see in a five wave structure is we'll have a one, two, three, four, five. And then we don't really see that. You know, if, if we move this up, you know, that would have to be the wave one. Um, this would have to be the wave three, which invalidates it because that makes wave three the smallest wave within this, and that that's a, a rule for LA wave. Uh, wave three can't be the smallest, in which this does make it the smallest. Um, the only other option, in my opinion, is if we are just overly super extended and... Basically, it would have to be that. We'd have to look at a couple of different things on the smaller time frame to see if that is acceptable or not. Where we have just an overextended wave three um, that would come up to here and potentially just double top for a fifth wave. And look, something roughly like that. Um, and then that would also get us to the 1.236 of the overall drop down. Um, you know, right now we did tag the one to one um, extension uh, for this move here, uh, making this you know potentially that wave three. Um, but you know we're kind of in the middle of no man's land from. Um, this overall wave down and that's kind of where the the confusion is coming in for a lot of different people right now where we haven't really we got you know we we're at resistance um, you know, we got a little bit of a rejection but we're also kind of finding support at the same time uh, we're seeing some of the indicators come down and reset even though we've been trailing sideways for a little bit which is fairly bullish in my opinion um, and which you know we can ultimately get another leg up you know whether it's just we come up and we double top and then ultimately come over um, and then that would kind of be the end of the story. The other option for really what this could be then, if you know, if this does really end here, in my opinion, is it would just be a, a complex correction, um, and then that would make this more of a W X Y X Z, which would then have this be the end of the drop, making this a three wave. So that would be your W, three wave, X, and then this right here. Three wave, come down, three wave, and then this ultimately right here um, as basically a zigzag um, to finish off the Z, making this again a complex correction where we really kind of just finished off here, consolidate, uh, maybe you could try and get one more pump up, um, you know, create a slightly higher high, create that divergence or even a double top, creating the divergence, which will ultimately. Um, send it further on down to the downside. Um, but if we do continue to go up looking for targets around 250, 260 for ETH, uh, it also equals you know about 10,000 roughly for Bitcoin in that same area depending on the move. Um, so that's what I'm looking at a little bit more of a uh, macro time frame. I, you know, I do think we, will get, we get one more push up, um, but for ETH, you know, it, it been kind of just going sideways, creating lower highs, while Bitcoin's been creating higher highs um, as it's you know kind of going through and doing this sideways consolidation. And that partly is in tune to the overall Bitcoin dominance that we have as well as it's been going higher and higher. So we're seeing more moves on Bitcoin versus um, you know, what we've seen for ETH versus ETH has been 
um, kind of the opposite as we've gone through some of this potential run up before and even the drop, um, so on and so forth. So overall, that's what I'm looking at on the higher time frame. So let's go dive into um, you know what I've been looking at so far from daily on the GAN chart. Um, again, kind of so somewhat in the middle of nowhere where we are currently, um, you know, we've kind of came up and hit these lines as resistance, broke through it, had this one as resistance, broke through it, kind of trained in sideways within the channel. And, you know, where we're looking at roughly 250, 260 um, for ETH and, you know, right up here, depending how we look at it over the next couple of days, um, you know, kind of gets us, you know, within that range, um, you know, from our next trend line of resistance you know if we do end up breaking through the prior to 30 resistance where we got rejected at we're also right at the top of the volume band as well so if we do break that with conviction you know be i you know would be very interested in um you know jumping along and riding that up towards you know roughly that 250 to high 260 range right up here and again i guess always look for areas of confluence on primary la wave but I also like to look at other different trading strategies and analysis as well to see, you know, what is the best, I guess, area of confluence, where do things match up overall together. So um, decision time, you know, ultimately right here, um, you know, we're going to get another break up um, and get a short resistance or break through with conviction. And that will ultimately set us back up, like I said, towards the high 260s, in my opinion, for ETH um, as, you know, roughly 250. Um, even prior to 60 right here was support uh, resistance here as well. So that's where I'd like to see us end up going uh, for ETH here in the near future. So let's go ahead and flip on down to the four hour. Um, diving back into the GAN, um, kind of see where for the four hour, um, you know, again, it's kind of 250 somewhat in the near future lines up right here with this trend line here as a resistance um, we also have a few other ones to you know bump up through along the way and obviously the four hour there's going to be a lot more um, but it's actually played out pretty well in regards to areas of resistance and support um, again got rejected here as resistance found this 45 degree as support that actually kind of carried us up this entire move broke that rode this one for a little bit um, and now again kind of in the middle of nowhere so we're trying to come up to this one here if we do break that one i would like to you know ultimately see us come back up or we'll hit again roughly 230 uh for some resistance and you know make honestly just kind of carry this one back up to roughly 250 260 somewhere in that ballpark where we also have this fib on the gan chart as well i think it is yep the 382 to get us back up there um find some resistance and yeah, go from there. Um, looking at more of an Elliott wave count, um, kind of a similar thing where we do have some of the indicators somewhat resetting. Um, you know, we on the Constance Brown index, we did have some bearish divergence. Um, you know, within these two, so we you know looking to see a little bit of rejection here when we come back down for a little bit and reset some of these indicators. Um, we're also kind of seeing us find a little bit of support here on some of these EMAs, but ultimately probably because of really this um, bearish divergence between these two is what I'm looking for a little bit more of a further drop to the downside. And depending on how this um, you know played out, I'm looking at this as more of a flat correction. So... A bit more of an ABC here. Um, you know, it was a five wave move down, three wave for the B, and then another five wave down for the C. Um, ultimately, you know, this could be another A wave, um, come back down for a B, and then up again for a C. Or um, again, we want to look at what is the bullish and bearish scenario because they're both on the table. If this is more of the top. <clears throat> what we also could be looking at is this is more end up being a leading diagonal where this is our five wave, three wave, five wave, three wave, and then another five wave down, um, creating a leading diagonal and then which we would pump up probably double top um, 
if you maybe not quite get that high, um, and that would end up being a wave one, two, and then three going further ultimately to the downside for a larger correction if this whole thing here is a WXYXZ as we finish and get up here towards the top. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so interesting to see where we can um, look for right here in this area. Uh, they can give us a little bit more indication of where this is going to ultimately go in the near future. So that is what I'm looking for right here in this in this zone here. Um, but like I said, it, everything looks pretty corrective to me. I don't see it playing off necessarily as fully impulsive. Um, and that's you know really going to be the interesting aspect of um, you know really what I'm looking for. Sorry, thought I was looking at something else for a second. Wanted to uh, bring something else up. So, um, yeah. So let's dive a little bit more into the 15 minute, uh, where we can be looking at a couple things for the near term. Um, again, if we look at this as WXY, or I'm sorry, an ABC right here, and then A up, B down, and then another C to get us higher. Um, or again, always a bull count and a bear count, right? Um, it's always to be aware of both. So if we don't see a rejection here and we do end up kind of blasting through, depending on what we're looking at, um, let's make this a little bit bigger. So obviously we do have this um, trend line that is above us. And what we want to look at on a smaller time frame is, you know, where can we count the five waves? And obviously right here, Pretty clean five-way count, in my opinion. So the, a five-wave is either the end of something um, or the beginning of something. Um, even on this wave up, this could be as simple as an ABC. Again, three-wave move, which this would then indicate we would need to have a five-wave um, move to the downside to come off impulsively or another three wave move down to reset and then ultimately blast off but what can also end up playing out um, is this could ultimately end up being a wave one with a five wave move up and we came down and reset right so five wave three wave and then kicking us off here with a little bit more of an impulsive move. Because with five waves, it's either the end, beginning of something or the end of something, right? So um, there's a couple different ways to count it in regards to which way does it go. Um, because if this can still be an ABC, but this could still ultimately end up being a wave one. Um, if we pull our fibs, again, wave A coming down for the B. Um, a C wave for expanded flat can go up to the 1.236. So that's right back up at 230 where we found our um, you know, resistance before, uh, 227. 228 roughly, where we got rejected. Um, so 1.618 is the extreme, um, and also the 1.32, but also look how nicely that lines up right there from the rejection before. So we had, and you know, what I'm looking for is an ABC down, um, and it can be in that we are in somewhat of correction land, um, can ultimately play out to where this is on a larger move, we have this as our A, right? And then this becomes a three wave move up for the B, and then ultimately another five wave down right here for the C, uh, making this a larger move. Um, so that's what I'm looking for here. You know, if we obviously, since we did kick off with a five wave move, um, you know, we. Theoretically, we can be done. Um, you know, we did came 
close to the 1.61a or at the 0 0.5 for an ABC. ABC can really be anywhere between the 0.5 and the 1.618. Um, so that's really what we need to look for um, in areas of confluence. Um, but also looking at some of the indicators, you can also see that um, this a little bit bigger here. You know, what, is, what are some of the near-term indicators telling us, you know, right here for this particular area? So we can see how hard the, the Stokes have reset. Um, you know, we have the Constance Brown index that's, you know, reset quite well. Um, we also have our um, RSI that's sitting, you know, somewhat in the neutral zone, um, kind of getting squeezed again between the EMAs and the volume bands. So that's really kind of, you know, what we're looking for. Um, in regards to seeing something, uh, I guess some of the indicators reset a little bit to ultimately give us a, a next pump to ultimately take off um, with a little bit of conviction. Um, there's also one other thing that I would like to look for. Maybe we should go back to this guy. And let's go to the 15 minute. Okay. All right. So, um, again, kind of see right here, even on the volume bands, we've gotten got rejected there. Um, we're really kind of consolidating right under it, um, which is fairly bullish. You know, we haven't gotten a really hard rejection from it. Um, so, that is somewhat bullish, in my opinion. Um, even on ETH, what we've liked to do, what I've noticed so far, is we kind of just run this trend line, and while the indicators reset the entire time, and that gives us enough momentum um, and enough power to break through a lot of the resistance that we've had with a little bit of power. So, um, again, areas of confluence is what I look for. So I am, um, I guess, you know, near term fairly bullish, um, mid term fairly bearish uh, just because you know, from my opinion we're coming up towards the top of really what we could be doing from a move up from a correction standpoint uh, like I said it's possible to make it is a little bit more impulsive which would get us um, you know over our prior high that we were recently at but um, everything that I've been looking at is a little bit more more bearish in my opinion in regards to the wave structure just seems to be coming off as more corrective but doesn't mean we can't move up higher still in a corrective state uh, just means that we will need to come back down and reset and uh, you know be looking for um, ultimately you go back to the four hour um, midterm somewhat of a reset um, you know somewhere around the 150 range um, you know maybe a, a smidge lower um, somewhere in that area uh, but again it kind of just depends ultimately how this plays out in the near term uh, to give us some of our midterm to longer term targets for what we're looking at so um, that's what I'm looking at guys I uh, hope you guys enjoy my technical analysis as always make sure you guys smash the likes and hit that little subscribe bell and I will hope to see you guys in the discord have a great day